Welcome back to the channel. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna be looking at liquid simulation and not just any liquid. We're gonna be making a nice viscous honey simulation here. And you can see this is really, really cool. Very beginner friendly actually, and a lot simpler than you'd think. And I'll quickly show you, this is the actual um, scene here. Um, so we're making this nice little honey material and modeling a little um, wooden dipper. And you can see here, this is what it looks like. So. I hope you enjoyed this beginner friendly tutorial on making a honey simulation in Blender. Definitely subscribe, give a like and check out some of my other content in the description. You can even join Skillshare for free for one month and I have a ton of full length beginner courses on there. So check that out in the description. So without wasting any more time, let's jump in and make this cool honey simulation in Blender 4.2. So we'll start by modeling the honey stick, which is really easy, or the little dipper stick, you know, um, whatever you call it. So we're gonna go ahead and delete all the default objects in the scene. We'll just go Shift A. We'll go to our mesh options and add in a circle. And what we can do here is under our add circle, um, our properties here, let's just go with 24 verts. And then we'll tab into edit mode. And with all of this active, we'll go E to extrude and Z and extrude it up about this much. I'm gonna go to my edge select option up here. And then over here, I'm just gonna go Control R. You should see a yellow line. And once you see it, just roll your middle mouse button until you have about this many segments and then double click. With those edges still active, you're gonna go Control B and create a bevel. Let's go something like this and then left click. And then just go E to extrude, right click till it go. And then you can go S, Shift and Z. So S, Shift, Z, and that'll make it scale on the X and the Y at the same time and exclude the Z axis. So we can do something like this. We're gonna go in about this much. There we go. And then let's deselect, shift alt, left click on this edge and then go E to extrude and S and then let's go F to fill that face and then E to extrude up, left click, S to scale. And then let's go shift alt, left click while we're holding those two in to select the bottom edge. E to extrude, S to scale, let's go down like so. And then E to extrude and Z, go down a little bit. S to scale. And then E to extrude and Z, go down about this much. And let's press F to fill that face. And let's go E to extrude, S to scale. And then E to extrude again, just to make a little nub on the end. Now um, the proportions with this, you can make it look nicer by going to your vertex select option, enabling proportional editing, and then you can always come here and just in wireframe, select bits that you want and scale them a little bit. Just if you wanted to add a little bit more of a natural profile, like so, completely up to you how you wanna do that. But something like this is fine. I'm gonna tab back out and I'm gonna go to my modifiers, add modifier, search. I'm gonna type in bevel. Go ahead and add a bevel. Then decrease the amount here. Bump up the segments. And then go add modifier, search and type in sub. And give it a subdivision surface, bumping that up to two. And now I'm gonna apply the bevel and I'm gonna apply the subsurface. And just to be safe here, in case we have any funny normals, we'll just tab into edit mode. We'll press A to select everything and we'll go Alt N. And we'll just click on this thing here called recalculate outside and any potential bad normals will be fixed. So we're gonna go over here and just deactivate the proportional editing. And now you can see we have a nice high topology honey um, dipper here. So we're gonna go back into object mode. In our front view, we'll grab a honey dipper. We're gonna go R to rotate, click. And in our top view, we could rotate it forward a little bit. So maybe position it, you know, something like this. Then we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna go to mesh options and add in a cube. And I might just grab the honey dipper and just go S to scale it down a bit and go control A and apply that scale. Then I'll select the box here and I'll press Z, I'll go into wireframe. And I'll just go S to scale it up about this much. Might move the honey dipper in just a little bit. And this is gonna be our domain. Okay, so I might move the box down just a bit more. So something like that. And maybe just stick in wireframe for now. And then we're gonna go shift A and under our mesh options, we'll add in a UV sphere. S to scale that down about this big and that will go right on top of a honey scoop. Now you can obviously place it wherever you want, but for me, I think that's just a nice place to have the honey start pouring over here. So make sure to save as you work. And what we're gonna do now, we're gonna select this domain. We're gonna go to our physics, simply give it a fluid 
and under the type here change it to domain and under the domain type make it liquid and then under the resolution let's make it 64 you can go higher to like 128 if you want to um, but I'm just gonna go 64 then go down and enable diffusion and then come to the drop down and this surface tension here taking this up is what's gonna give us more of a viscous um, sort of behavior so I'm gonna take this and make it 0 0.008 that's gonna give us a good result and I'm also going to come here and make sure mesh is enabled, which it should be by default if you're using the 4.2 build of Blender. I'm also going to come here to my end frame value and make it 100, should be enough under the cache. And I'm also going to come here to the end frame value here in the timeline and make it 100. That should be plenty for our little animation. Okay, and then let's just also come to the type here under the cache and just make it all. And now let's get to our fluids. We're going to select the little um, emitter here. We're gonna select this little sphere. Under our physics, we're also gonna give it a fluid. We're gonna come here to type and make it flow. And the flow type here will make it liquid, as you can see. And make sure that the flow behavior here is set to inflow and not geometry, okay? By the way, if you're wondering what this little, um, these little animate properties are, you could actually keyframe what sort of behavior, flow behavior this is, and that'll, and you can also um, animate the property for use flow. Safe example, you wanted this flow to start at a specific point in your animation. So not just frame one in this case, okay? That's what that would be for. We won't cover it now, so we'll just keep it more simple, but that's if you're wondering how to do that. So now let's also select a honey stick and let's just go over, give that a fluid and this type, we're gonna make a vector. And that just means it can affect the simulation. Otherwise it will just fall right through it. So let's now go and grab our domain. Let's go over to our physics and we should now be able to save and then go over here and also make sure is resumable is enabled. That just means if you stop the simulation at any point, you can resume it. And with everything saved, we're now gonna go bake all and it should bake this. And I quickly just stopped it. Um, it didn't take that long, only a few seconds. I quickly just pressed escape just to check and that's looking pretty good, but I just remembered um, we don't want it just to be viscous. We want it to look a little bit slower. So if you want to keep it at this speed, you're welcome. I'm just going to go over to the cache for now and just free it up. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the top and under the settings, we still have the domain selected. I'm just going to come here to the time scale and make it 0.45 and that's going to make it a bit slower. And then I'll save and I'll come back down here and I'll just click on bake all again. And here we have, it's now done. It only took like two minutes on my computer. And here you can see, we now have this nice viscous flow of honey. Now I only really want the first few shots here. So I'm just gonna pause at a shot that I like. Something like that looks good. I'm gonna right click and go shade smooth with that domain selected. And now let's go to our front view. We're gonna go shift A. We're just gonna add in a camera. We'll go G, Y and move the camera back. And I'll position mine like so. There we go. Then I'm going to go shift A. I'm going to add in a plane. I'm going to rotate it on the X by 90 degrees. I'm just going to go S to scale it and then S, X, give it some X length. Then I'm going to go G and Y to move it back. So all it is, it's just a simple plane. I'm going to scale it up in the background. And now we can go over to our render settings, change it to cycles. And under your render max samples, make it something like 55, should be fine. And then let's select the honey. Let's go over to our materials. So this flow over here, we're gonna go new and call it honey. Let's come to the base color here and kind of make it like this sort of color. It will bring the roughness down almost to zero. And under the transmission, we'll take that all the way up to one. Okay, we'll get back to that in a bit. And then we're going to select the background, this plane, and just go new. And let's just make that dark. Add it into the base color here. And now if we go Z and go rendered, we can simply go Shift A and go to our light options. Add in an area light. And I'm going to move mine to the side. And I'll rotate it. And I'm also going to go to my light properties and just scale that, um, take up the power. And I'm also going to come here to the size and just scale it up. And at this point, you could take it and shift D to duplicate. And I'm just rotating it around a 3D cursor, but I'm just duplicating it and having it come a little bit from the side. 
and I might just have one kind of coming from the front. So just three area lights, very simple. And then I'm gonna just select that background and I'll just maybe move it in a little bit closer. There we go, and that's looking really, really good. Beautiful. Now we can just select the little honey stick. And for now, um, all you can do is give it a material and give it sort of like a darker color, something like that. But what I would recommend is that you go online and find a nice um, wood texture. I already have some materials um, and you can look it up on the internet. There are a ton of different um, tutorials on wood materials, but I'm just gonna append one that I already have in my library that I downloaded a while ago. And it's just kind of like this plywood texture. I'm just gonna import it into Blender and I'll select my stick and I'll give it that um, plywood material. But you guys could use whatever you want. And at this point, you really can edit it as much as you want. Another thing that's really gonna look cool, if you go to your material, your, I mean your world properties, under the color here, you can give it a sky texture and then bump the strength down to like 0.2 or something. Um, that looks really good. So now you got some environment lighting or you can even go ahead if you have some HDRIs um, you can even load one of those into Blender. Um, I've got a collection of them that I like. Uh, but you guys get the idea here. There's a lot of different things you can do. But the main idea here was just showing you guys today how to do the sort of honey simulation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to find a shot that I like. And let's go ahead to the render and then render the image. And there we have it guys. You can now render this out as an animation. Um, I've covered how to do that a few times and there's a lot of resources on that on the internet. So I won't cover it right now, but it's really simple to do. And you can render this now as a final um, sequence of images or a video and have fun with it. I really hope you have enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.